Taiwan special number three for the week. Britain is turning its attention to Hong Kong. We've got a governor with his article in the Times. I, I kind of read from it uh, yesterday. We've got the foreign minister telling the Chinese that they need to behave themselves. And, 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 what, and, and we've got China. England has nothing to say. Britain has nothing to say about this. It is purely a, an internal matter for China. Don't disrespect. Stay out. Mind your own business. Like, then that's coming from Beijing. This, this, this grandiosity complex. This, this, I can't admit that I'm not good enough as I want to be, so I'm going to pretend to be bigger than I am. This hyper-embarrassed, hypersensitive, can't deal with the fact that they've got normal problems and bad breath like everybody else. Hyper-insecure, narcissistic China. Um, narcissistic, psychopathic, personality disorder consortium. China responding from their unaddressed shame culture, um, which, you know, to try, try to get a missionary professor in America to say to address the shame culture. No, no, can't address the shame culture. Have to let it continue and let them carry on. Yes, that's the thing. Maybe China would respond maturely if more Christians had stood for the fact that we're supposed to help people get past their shame. So, you know, po arguably part of the conflict here is from, from missionary professors in America compromising. You know, the, the message of Jesus, pardon me for a minute. The message of Jesus is that we don't have to act this way. We don't have to act like dweebs. I've got problems. You've got problems. We can get over it. The book of Enoch describes it as repentance unto hope. We're supposed to help people get this. That, that's what Christianity is about. I study Bible in college. I believe in the five fundamentals. And we're supposed to take that message to people. And the missionaries would try to deal with the Chinese and they're so hard-headed the missionaries would lose because they have this, I'm going to force you to do things the white way attitude. And that didn't work. So they failed. And so they came back and the missionary professors say, well, it's going to fail. And no, 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 no. How about you be patient with people you love them and you figure out what it takes to tell them that we can act like mature people. Well, that hasn't happened yet to Beijing. And that's how Beijing is responding. I wrote about this specifically times this week. I, I described exactly the, the, the complex that's going on. And it's kind of funny to watch the back and forth cultures. On the one hand, we've got over here, we got the British. Oh, you can't do that. It's against regulations. You know, it's a, according to the Sino-British Joint Declaration of 1984, paragraph 743, subparagraph B, you are in violation by meddling with the Hong Kong Basic Law because you have attempted to appoint professionals where, you know, they do not meet the random qualifications of the people of the... So, so you've got... Uh, yeah, the, so the British are citing their, their technical laws and policies and the Chinese, get out! It's not your matter! It's Chinese! Hong Kong is China! The great! And don't tell us what to do! You know, and so and we've got this going on. And it, it's like, like I, I wonder, like it, it, it's, this is kind of where you sort of kind of want to be a conspiracy theorist. It's just like, did the British know that the Chinese would be wholly incapable of keeping a promise and that's why they made them promise so they could have their excuse to take Hong Kong back anyway? It, it's, it's like you wonder. I have no reason to believe that. I, I, put, I put a very positive, uh, probably more charitable, should be more assumed what's going on. Uh, spin on it. I, I don't think it was a conspiracy theory. I think it was a benefit of the doubt. If if it was China can stay hands off for 50 years, then we can trust China. But we're going to make China stay hands off for 50 years. And I think that Britain saw it kind of as a trial period to give China a chance. I think that's what it was. Um, and, but it's, it's like, hmm, the golden news about this, the, 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 I'm sorry, I've got a hangnail on my finger and it's annoying me and I'm chewing away at it. And you're telling me to stick to the issues. The, the, um, the, the thing about the British in Hong Kong right now, 
is that the British really do care. That's news, folks. This, this, this is this week. Earlier, the foreign minister in his little repartee with, with, uh, with the Chinese ambassador, foreign minister said, he said, we will put ethics above economics in, in my own words. But he said something very much like that. Our values will be more important than, 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 than the money. And, um, and, and he threatened to recall the British envoys from China and to kick out the Chinese ambassador from Britain. I like, see a lot of people are going to, well, but Theresa May is resigning and we're looking at Boris Johnson in a different administration. Look, I, a foreign minister and the last British governor of Hong Kong are not going to come along and say, Britain must stand for the people. They must intervene. They must hold China accountable. If China's going to break treaty, China can't be trusted anywhere, anywhere else in the world. So we have to step in and regulate. We had a treaty, China's breaking it. We have to do what we have to do now, which is probably going to be to take over Hong Kong and say Hong Kong's no longer Chinese. Like that's where this is going, folks. I don't know if you know. I've said for a long time it could go there. And as of this week, it is going there. And you don't start that. The foreign minister doesn't start his repartee with the Chinese ambassador. You, they, they, the, 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 pre, the last governor of Hong Kong, that's kind of a big token deal, but it, it's more voices. These guys aren't going to come out and say this unless they have backing from the crown. I, I'm, I, I don't want to act like I know something in the British government, and I don't want to act like I'm an expert. Remember, Britain is a constitutional monarchy. The queen, with a stroke of the pen, can dissolve all of parliament. She doesn't because she knows that the best way to run a government is to let the people run themselves. Let the kids clean their own room, so to speak. Let the 16-year-old wash his own car. He needs to learn the responsibility of it. Let them go. And, and, but the monarch can come along and change things. And, you know, the current queen's father put Winston Churchill in charge to save Britain from World War II. So, you know, Theresa May couldn't get a majority. So she asked permission from the queen to form the government with a coalition. They, they call it forming the government because the government is this vapor. It's, it's not a lasting establishment. It, it's, you know, theoretically. Um, so, you know, in, in, in Britain. So, these foreign ministers, or the foreign minister, these other voices, these, these older, established, respected voices in the British government would not be making noises about how China broke the treaty that lets Hong Kong be Chinese. Okay, you know, Hong Kong's Chinese, be, Hong Kong is part of China because of a treaty. The treaty's broken. Hmm, I wonder what the implication of that would be. Okay, they're not using this kind of talk. We, ha we must act and do something. We can't allow this sort of thing to carry on and not be addressed. If China's going to break treaty on this, they can't be trusted with anything by anyone. The world must pay attention and heed, you know. They're saying these kinds of things. They wouldn't do this if they didn't have a deep support in things that would last a long time in Britain's government. I'm just, that's how their structure works. So we are looking at whatever the administration is. You know, it, it's like Democrats and Republicans both support Taiwan. You know, elections aren't going to change that in America. And we are looking at a long, at long-term rhetoric coming out of England that could reshape which flag flies over Hong Kong. This is happening in our time. Now, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do a special because there's an, I'm going to do a feature Friday because there's a funny little thing that's come up and I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. See you then.